Hey everybody, Stu Smith here with another Tactical Fitness Report, and we have a special guest today, Connor Dietz. Welcome. Yes, thank you for having me, uh, Stu. As I understand you, this is our the bicentennial number two hundred episode. So, uh, I right. appreciate you having me, and uh, excited to be here. You know, we started a podcast with one of those things like, "What are we going to talk about?" I don't know, and we just started talking about tactical fitness. So, I really appreciate you being on because you have figured out a way to engage not only athletics, but tactical fitness, which we think about it as a tactical athlete, um, but also um, recruiting as well. And we'll get into that story. But before we get into all that, let's hear about you as a uh, Air Force veteran. What's your story from you know, high school athletics into what you're doing now. Yeah. And, and it all, it's funny how much it ties together. Um, but Stu, to your point, I mean, it really is, uh, you know, what I've, I've always kind of said outside of God and family or, you know, my, my religion and family, both military and sports have provided me every opportunity in life. Um, and outside of those, um, you know, I don't really know where I'd be or what I'd be doing, but chances are it probably wouldn't be very good and I wouldn't be very good at it. So uh, I owe a lot to the two of them. And that really is the foundation for um, our, our company, what we're doing today at GMTM and, and how that applies to both sports and to military. Um, so we'll get there, obviously. But yeah, I was, you know, born and raised uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, so Midwest all the way through. Uh, didn't have a ton of military in my family. Both my grandfather served. Um, but I was fortunate enough, uh, to, to play three sports, um, and, and be decent enough to catch the, the eyes of some recruiters and some coaches, uh, coming up, uh, and play on some good teams. So about my junior year, the air force Academy, um, came on my radar, uh, shot me an offer to, to play football and continue my career out West. Uh, you know, I, I was kind of unsure. I didn't really know much about the Academy or, or service afterwards, never thought much about it. Um, but as soon as I went out to the Academy and out West, uh, my eyes were open and, and everything changed. Um, and I think one thing in terms of just like the academies and really military sports, I'm sure Stu, you to test is it's really the people. Um, and so as soon as I met the people out West at the Academy and I built some relationships, even just that first weekend, I was there on an official visit with, you know, future teammates, uh, cadets that were there at the time, uh, and the coaching staff, a lot of those guys were graduates themselves of the Academy. And so, as soon as I, I went out there, saw it for myself, was exposed to the greater sense of purpose and service of what it is, um, both on the field and off the field, uh, and really the people that were there, I knew that's where I wanted to be. Um, and that's where I wanted to kind of surround myself with um, as I took that step from high school to, you know, whatever life was going to present itself with. Um, right, so you played so quarter, out, you, you yeah. play quarterback, right? I did, yeah. So I went out west and um, one of the few places that uh, – you know, uh, a, a guy of my stature uh, can play quarterback uh, is at the academy. So I went out west and, uh, yeah, I was uh, able to kind of get out there. I got a couple of injuries early on, but was able to, to, to stick with it. And the coaches believed in me enough to, to stick with me. Uh, and so, yeah, I was able to kind of start some games my sophomore year and then work my way into a starting role uh, thereafter. So uh, nice. a really incredible experience, um, you know, having the opportunity to play quarterback and, and be a team captain out there for the Falcons. Most importantly, um, did you beat Navy? Man, that's a that's that's a dagger to the chest. Still, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, I knew you were going to ask it, and, and you know, all credit to them. Hey, they they, they had some well, great good. teams. I well, was I mean, I that, was not that, able to 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 raise the flag on that one. That's okay. Well, the 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 saying that that answer was going to whether or not we continued this podcast or not. So. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we'll keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. I was gonna say. <laughs> so uh, you you obviously play sports at a high level, um, and then you go into the military. What was your uh, life like in the military? What what years was that active duty? Yeah. So I went. Uh, so I was at the academy from 2008 uh, to 2012 uh, and a half, if you may. Uh, I like to say I was. Uh, top five in my graduating class because I was one of five who graduated in December of 2012. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Seen that I, happened I was, before. 
Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was unique circumstances. I had uh, a kind of going back to some injuries I had sustained. I was given the opportunity to essentially take a red shirt year. Um, and you don't see that a lot at academies. Um, again, I was very fortunate with some leadership there to, to give me an extra six months uh, so I could have another season to play. Um, so um, incredible opportunity having my senior season graduated in December, right before our bowl game uh, in 2012. Uh, and then uh, was uh, uh, stationed down at McDill Air Force Base. So commissioned, um, obviously, as a second lieutenant, um, knew I was going to be an LRO, so a logistics readiness officer, uh, and start my commitment uh, in my service down at McDill Air Force Base uh, being an LRO. Um, okay. So uh, just, just for explanation of what that is, what, what did you do normally, you know, as a Air Force officer, LRO, and how, how many years was that? Yep, so I served all uh, five uh, active duty years as an LRO um, and was, again, really uh, fortunate to, to spend that time down here at McDill for a couple of reasons. One, the mission uh, and what we were doing, you know, McDill has, you know, both CENTCOM and SOCOM, uh, as well as the McDill mission, which is an air refueling base. Um, so really fortunate to, to not only be in the Air Force world, but also some joint stuff supporting both CENTCOM and SOCOM with their operations. So I was exposed to a ton at a very, um, I guess, kind of early stage in my career, um, which I still am, am very fortunate for, um, both in terms of just, um, you know, people working with, uh, you know, both folks in the Navy at a high level, the Army at a high level, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, everything. Um, so got to understand all of the worlds versus just Air Force and just Air Force logistics. Um, at the same time, I was actually um, still competing, still training. Um, so I was able to, you know, uh, spend some time down here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, spend some time with Chicago Bears, kind of trying to keep that athletic life alive, uh, both at while serving as an active duty officer. Um, so, you know, when I wasn't, uh, you know, with my my team and working my my job uh, on base, I was training uh, as a as a free agent and working out with some teams to again try and keep that that dream alive. Um, and I don't think the military nor the academy, I can't think of any other position in the world that would have afforded me that opportunity um, to, to kind of do that. That's really neat. That's, that's where I kind of see this, your future going, right? I, I, I know what you do now, but I can see how all this is starting to tie together. You know, being a, being an athlete that is always trying to get to the next level, you know, there, there's a lot of hoops you have to go through and you have to make yourself uh, visible and relevant to a lot of coaches that are looking for your particular skill set. So, you know, how, how, you know, going through all of that, how did that define what you're doing now? Yeah, you're exactly right against it. Or uh, athletics. Um, recruitment, even military. I mean, there's a lot that goes into the, pre the preparation um, to be seen at the right time by the right person um, for different opportunities. Um, and so what I've kind of seen in my experience is, um, yes, that's true. And you can own your story and your path to, to get there and, and give yourself the best opportunities. But there's a lot of folks that also can't do that. Um, and it's kind of this this balanced equation, right? This seesaw where it's like when your ability to kind of garner the exposure you need, be in front of the right people based on that organization, being able to kind of discover you and engage with you, um, that's got to level out in order for that opportunity to exist. And so, you know, kind of through personal experience um, and seeing it, you know, not just through my story, but teammates, friends, other officers call right, across the, the world, right? I mean, it's, you see that time and time again. I know, you know, folks that I have uh, played with that, you know, should be in the NFL today and they're not. I know folks that I've played with that I didn't necessarily think should be and they are, right? And <laughs> yeah. not to say one's better or worse. And, and it goes back to even tactical athletes or even the military, right? I know officers that are incredible and they should, you know, in my opinion, be in command or be doing X, Y, Z. And, and maybe they didn't get that opportunity. And then I've seen some that I didn't technically necessarily agree with. And again, I'm not the decision maker on all this, but you know, just for this, that, or the other, they didn't get that. And so 
really, I, I've always had a passion for, for people um, and people who operate and perform at a high level and being able to help connect them with opportunities and make those opportunities available for them. Um, so kind of seeing that all through my lens, uh, obviously kind of tr- aided in my transition out of the military, uh, at least active duty wise, um, where I decided, hey, I have, I have the opportunity um, transitioning from the military uh, to, you know, at a young age, kind of start something myself. Um, and if it fails, it fails. If it succeeds, it succeeds. But at least, you know, I have the opportunity now um, to kind of start something and, and give back to the two worlds that I, I care most about, which are um, the military and athletics. Well, I think that's great. And why, one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on here is just because, you know, that transition that you mentioned is very challenging for a lot of us. You know, it's, it's real easy to go get another job, but, you know, to take, roll the dice and start your own business, you know, take, takes a little guts, but it also, um, it really requires you to have an answer to other people's problems. And it sounds like that's exactly what you were able to do with your company. So if you would, let's, let's explain the birth of, of game time or GMTM um, and how, how that is, how that works, how it started focusing on athletes and how it's now evolving into tactical athletes and Navy recruiting specifically. Yeah. And, you know, even we, we've kind of mentioned it to, you know, earlier on this, where it's think about two things, think about athletes and you think about opportunities um, and that athletes, again, it started in sports and then it's kind of turned into tactical and now it's just turned into a huge audience um, and then connecting them with opportunities. So, you know, the, the birth um, and the thought of it. You know, so I'm one of uh, three founders total um, and the, the two uh uh, my partners, uh, Alex Reboff and Joey Grant, um, they kind of had the idea primarily just in sports. Alex is a is an is a genius, if you may. He's really a wizard um, that comes from the the technology space and being able to to kind of build technology that can uh, you know grow and scale companies in a in a multitude of ways. Um, and he's done that time and time again uh, with some of the best technology companies that that we all use on a daily basis. So his mindset, along with Joey, who Joey was a former collegiate athlete, played center at UCF when they went to the Fiesta Bowl and put them on the map. Um, And then he actually went on to be the recruiting director at at UCF. So they came at it from this very strategic lens of technology and sports, sports recruiting, uh, and figured, you know, if we can make sense of, you know, there's so much fragmented data and information out there in the world both for organizations and for, and for these athletes. And so if they can make sense of that and make that useful for the organization, um, then they can do a lot of good in connecting these athletes to opportunities. They introduced me to this, uh, and I was fortunate enough, you know, to kind of hit it at the birth, the, the conception of the company and said, you know, maybe it goes beyond just these athletes, right? Maybe there's, you know, I see this in military life every single day, right? If there's only so many athletes that can play D1 or that can, you know, play on Team USA, right? All of those athletes that don't make that opportunity, where do they go? Well, one place that they could and I view should go is our United States military. Um, I think the Air Force, I mean, you know, Marine Corps, Navy, Army, these are incredible opportunities for young student athletes that, you know, whether they have the talent to play at the next level or not, they might not even be aware of that opportunity to serve and what that actually means. And so my thought was, you know, Hey, let's, 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 you know, do what we're going to do here in sports, but let's also start to think, how can we go beyond sports where there's a lot more athletes than there are opportunities in sports. So let's think about those opportunities, you know, kind of off the field as well. Um, And that's where we started to really grow our business where we provided uh, we have a platform um, where organizations use it um, to very intelligently uh, engage with the types of athletes that they're looking for, um, for their pipeline. Uh, and we provide athletes um, some very, very uh, intelligent uh, ways to gain exposure and get in front of those organizations. Nice. That's incredible. I, I tell you, I have been thoroughly enjoyed my uh, involvement in tactical fitness. In fact, I I was in here before we called it tactical fitness and you know, I can't tell you how many athletes are preparing to serve 
and typically the one thing that I've always been able to do is show an athlete, hey, you come in with a lot of great strengths, but there is usually an equal and opposite weakness that you may have neglected all of your life to become a tactical athlete. Because when we think of tactical athletes, we're also thinking of strength, power, speed, and agility, but you also need to be on this hand, you need to have muscle stamina and cardiovascular endurance, flexibility, mobility. You know, that's a wide range of athletic skills that obviously high level athletes don't need to be great in all of them. They just need to be great in one or two, right? And then the other ones are neglected. Whereas the tactical athlete just needs to be nice and steady in all of them. So um, with that discussion, and that's how I kind of define tactical fitness, how are you making that transition with the athlete into the uh, tactical athlete? Uh, arena and it, it well part part of that <laughs> is talking to talking to you Stu right I mean we 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 connected you know not not too long ago and uh, really it's a it's a learning curve for us right you know in terms of we built this this platform and, and all of these tools for you know athletes and sports organizations and we've you know slowly over the past year been you know taking that crossover uh, and bringing it to, you know, our defense, the military recruiters and these tactical type athletes. So a lot of it's education, right? Talking to the likes of yourself that work with these tactical athletes. You know, what are they doing? Where are they working out? Where are they kind of putting their stuff in order to get potentially noticed and get in front of the right people? You know, all of the, you know, police, fire rescue, military, yeah. you name it, right? I know you work with them all. So a lot of it's the education, both on Hey, if I'm Air Force, you know, special warfare recruiting, or I'm Navy recruiting, you know, what are those recruiters currently doing? Um, where are they looking? How are they going about engaging and talking to these potential prospects? How are they evaluating them? And then, kind of from cradle to grave, what does that process look like? So, understanding it from that side, and then from you know the side of the athlete, you know, everyone like yourself who's training with these athletes that's been a former tactical athlete, um, you know, what are they doing, um, both on a kind of daily uh, basis in terms of their working out, but also, again, what are they doing to get prepared and then, you know, get in front of these types of organizations. So I think a lot of it's the education up front, um, trying to understand that. Uh, and from there, you know, we've been able in our, uh, you know, at least where we are today is to, to connect those two. Um, and so again, that's kind of landed us, uh, with, uh, you know, a couple of military recruiting organizations specifically today. I think we're talking, you know, we'll talk about some Navy recruiting aspects where, um, they are leveraging our platform, uh, to kind of host a, a virtual workout challenge, um, where any potential prospect and any tactical athlete, um, if they want to be eligible to get in front of some of the top elite Navy recruiters and have a, you know, spot on their team, right? Um, they submit uh, to this kind of national event. Um, and by doing so, they get a really, uh, a really neat opportunity to kind of build their portfolio there, you know, their LinkedIn, so to speak. But, you know, at, at game time, we call that your athlete portfolio. So they'll get to own that and kind of put in all of their videos, their information, their social media, their um, all the above so that a Navy recruiter has everything they need in front of them to uh, kind of discover that tactical athlete, evaluate that tactical athlete, and then connect with that tactical athlete. Yeah, and also the tactical athlete can learn about the military options that he has available Absolutely. or she has available. So if you would, let, let's uh, share your screen and walk us through your platform on, uh, you know, whether it's the athlete or maybe we'll focus on the Navy recruiting side first, and then, we, then you can show us some of the highlights of your other athletes that you have on your portal. Absolutely. Let me pull this, uh, pull this up here. And so if you're, everyone's kind of looking right now, so this is a page again, any, any athlete, any tactical athlete, uh, out there, anyone interested in the Navy, um, this is a, think of this as just a, like a landing page in a, in a national competition where we're trying to find the, the best of the best and athletes that are interested in potentially, um, a Navy opportunity. And so this is their fit challenge. Um, so they're kind of pushing this, you know, far and wide to future sailors, but also to current student athletes that again, maybe aren't going to play professionally or aren't going to go to a division one, two, three school. They're looking for, for this. This is building that awareness, that education and the opportunity to, to participate and compete. So, you know, I'm, I've kind of already 
already submitted here, but if I am just anyone, I'm going to pull up the, the leg challenge of the week. I'm going to kind of dive in and, and, and watch a very quick intro video. And this is something that obviously the, the Navy put together uh, based on kind of their future sailors and, and their current servicemen and women, right? What do they like to see? Um, so this is kind of that, that leg day. Um, we'll read about it. And then it's as simple as filming it on your phone if I'm an athlete and just submitting it. I submit that video and it automatically bring, puts that video in my profile that I now can kind of list out everything from, hey, who I am, um, both as a, this a little bit, uh, who I am as, you know, uh, a, a person, my intro video, my, my contact information, um, where I've played, you know, kind of all this information that you'd see on a typical LinkedIn. Think mm -hmm. of this as your sort of, you know, true LinkedIn, but for, you know, military and sports, um, where it's very also interactive, right? It has my stats, um, other videos that I can upload, you know, here's my, my journey, right? This mm -hmm. is who Connor Dietz is talking about, you know, both my time uh, serving as an LRO at McDill, but also competing with you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, kind of showing my journey from sports to military back to, to sports. Um, hey, I'm interested in the Navy. Boom, I can pull up and now kind of showcase my exact workout that I did for, for the Navy, right? So it all lives in one place. Um, one thing that, that we think is super unique um, and, and obviously it's something that's kind of been our claim to fame in sports is there are these profiles um, that I don't care if you're a an, a football athlete, a curling athlete, a bobsled athlete, if you are uh, a service man or woman, a Navy recruiter, these profiles are a one-stop shop um, mm. to showcase who you are, what your story is, and then be able to connect with uh, anyone from across the country or around the globe at any point in time. Um, so these are extremely powerful. And it's, it's really as simple as that, what we're doing with the Navy, where, you know, their, their combine that they're launching with uh, it is right here for anyone to submit to. It's so easy. Um, but again, if you want to be in front of the right people and be eligible for it, this is where you come. Um, and this is where you kind of, you kind of take that first step to say, Hey, I'm interested. I, I want to get to, you know, be in front of the right people. Um, and if you're the Navy recruiters, right, this is where you're coming to, to kind of know exactly what athletes you're looking at when and where and why. Nice. And so that is gmtm.com. Um, and what, what is GMTM? Explain the, the, what, what that is, your, your website there. Yeah, so this, so kind of taking a, a, a zoomed, uh, a very zoomed in approach to a zoomed out approach, I guess. You yeah. know, this is a, a GMTM, again, think of this as kind of a, the athlete exposure platform, right? Organizations use our platform uh, to engage with athletes and athletes use our platform to gain exposure opportunities so i'm kind of signed in as a coach right now and uh, you know if people are kind of tracking along we have all types of cool things right so uh it's kind of like the airbnb right you can be uh, a host or uh you know someone staying uh, so switch to athlete, switch to coach our profiles are super fluid right so i you know here's my coach profile here's my athlete profile um and again, the tools are kind of similar for each, right? Where I can first and foremost own and edit my profile. This is the one-stop shop for me to, you know, like Stu, if you wanted to know who I was on LinkedIn or professionally, I'd send you my LinkedIn profile. If I want you to know who I am as a, you know, former athlete and, you know, uh, military member or whatever, I send you this link and you're going to land right here. This is all available to you. Um, again, nice. this profile is something that I control um, at all times, right? I have the option, you know, our, our platform affords me the opportunity to, you know, be able to compete in different, you know, showcases, right? I can go to the, you know, Cleveland Browns high school, you know, showcase where they're doing stuff or the LA Rams virtual, right? These are all, you know, Dick Sporting Goods, Europe's Elite. These are all organizations that are doing different events on our platform. So by Navy recruiting also being on here, it affords them the opportunity to be around brands like, you know, Jacksonville State or USA, you know, Team USA is all of the above. Um, so we have a million different ways for athletes to participate from virtual workouts, trainings, um, to even virtual visits, right? Hey, if I want to take a tour of, you know, I've never been to, to Stanford before, let me take a virtual visit to Stanford. Wow. Right? These are all organizations that are using our platform to host a virtual event to engage with the types of athletes that they're, that are in their world and that they're looking for. Um, but also all of the, you know, tactical athletes, 
you know, uh, traditional sports athletes, anyone on our platform, they can participate in all of these events. Um, again, they can kind of, they own their profile. Um, and then they can really do some cool things in terms of even like build different promotional material um, where, you know, here's a picture of me tie, hey, I just hit a thousand yards rushing. Boom, I can share that immediately to social media. Right. So there's a lot of things that that athletes can do in terms of submitting their film. Um, this is fun. This is a this is actually a, a, an a, a active duty Marine Corps officer, um, Riley Compton, and she participated in the bobsled combine. Um, so this is her kind of talking about herself. Uh, it's her sort of interview to USA bobsled. I think she's a logistics officer. But <laughs> There you go. There you go. Um, but this is her way, right? She submitted to the bobsled. So, you know, she can, if, if I'm Riley and I'm just trying to gain exposure, I can share that directly to social media. Hey, I just participated in bo at bobsled. I'm, I'm looking for you guys. I'm here, right? It's also bobsled's way. They, they can leave feedback for Riley um, immediately, right? They can kind of engage with her from this standpoint. Nice. And then they always have the ability to view her athlete. Mm -hmm. Boom, here it is. Here's her information, right? She was at George Washington University, height, weight, has some other information, and boom, here's all of her, all of her workout videos. Um, so now, instead of seeing her interview, we want to see her broad jump. It's right here in front of us. Oh, cool. So what's cool here is I'll fast forward. Riley actually turned into a, uh, uh, an, a huge success story where she now um, actually uh, garnered the opportunity to, to make Team USA bobsled um, by simply um, pushing her exposure and participating on game time. Nice, great story, man. That's awesome. And, and, and we've seen we've seen a few of those, and we're or, or a lot of those, I should say. And and we're, that's what you know I think makes the crossover between military uh, and sports just that that much more seamless and that much more identifiable for for both athletes and for the you know the military recruiters. It's amazing the power required for that sport too you know the just <laughs> not only fearless going down a hill that fast but i mean just the pure power required out of that so if you you have a background in power athletics you know that that is something to consider even oh, though you, that's <laughs> even though exactly you never grew right. up in snow at all i mean jamaican bobsled team yeah who knew yeah just just some sprinters right we we talk about it a lot in terms of like the, the transfer portal right talent transfer transfer athletes right again yeah. there's you know, these are some of the most coveted brands of people in the world right and and you know just because i think i'm gonna be a, a track runner or this that the other you know i just might not be aware of the other opportunities um of, of some incredible you know organizations that want to connect me and want me a part of their team um and again that kind of goes back to the military right these are some unbelievably intelligent and athletic individuals that would make for some of the, the greatest servicemen and women in our country. Um, and so trying to connect those dots as efficiently and effectively as possible has become a huge mission of GMTMs and of mine personally. Oh man. So awesome. Um, so what's the future for GMTM and other, you know, in, do you envision other branches of services being involved and, what, what are you seeing at the uptick for Navy recruiting because they're on GMTM? Yeah, very quick. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sue, in our, the kind of the cliche or the adage of, of the rising tide raises all ships. We very much believe that. Um, and we, you know, that's one of the first things I talk to any organization about that uses our platform, right? It's not a, Hey, if we use it, can they not use it? Cause you know, we, <laughs> yeah. we want to have, yeah, it's like, yeah. and we don't, it's, it's, you know, it's funny. I'm sure Stu, you personally, you probably have a similar thought as I, where I have a very, uh, or I try to practice having uh, a mindset of growth and abundance and not of scarcity. Um, so on a personal level, it's like, you know, Hey, maybe, you know, I don't introduce this person to this person cause then they're going to be connected. And that's like my contact versus, you know, growth mindset or abundance is, of course, I'm going to make that connection because whatever they do is probably going to do something awesome into the world and whatever good puts out into the world, it will ultimately rise us all. So, you know, we, we view our platform and, and the company that we're building in our technology the same way. Um, so for, for organizations, you know, it's, I want Navy on there. I want Air Force. I want all of these opportunities on there because 
together all of their, you know, their ownership, their, you know, uh, activeness on the platform, what they're doing and putting out to the world is ultimately driving more opportunities for an incredible talent pool um, of a user base, which are these athletes. And we're ultimately connecting this huge pool of athletes to opportunities. Um, so I never want, you know, there to be a, a quote unquote scarcity of opportunities or a lack of an ability uh, to connect uh, athletes to opportunities. So the future is, you know, we're, we're going to continue to, you know, we're, again, we're, we're super, super fortunate that our, our, we call it our talent team, right? Our, our development and technological team. I mean, these, these guys and girls are building incredible products on our platform and features, and they're doing things in the sports industry uh, that have never been done before. Um, and so we're, we're pushing new stuff and pushing the boundaries every single day. Um, and so the goal is to, again, provide athletes the best way to promote themselves, tell their story, brand themselves, market themselves, um, and kind of own their journey. Uh, and provide organizations the absolute best ways to to connect and engage with them. Um, we'd like to kind of raise, quote unquote, the the status quo for for you know on the military side, right? What you know, instead of just having to to go to schools and talk to kids and set up a booth or having to you know drive 30 miles to you know potentially talk to one recruit, right? How can we best equip these recruiters in our service to to not only bring in recruits or bring in potential prospects, but mm -hmm best prospects that fit what our goals and what our initiatives are as, as a national defense in, in our country. Nice. I love it. Well, I, I see the uh, relationships are so strong, you know, between the athletic world, the military side world, and, and luckily, you know, in the last 15 or maybe even a few less than that years, the military, police, firefighters are all starting to think of themselves as athletes more. I remember in the 90s, I remember saying, that's the problem. We don't think of ourselves as athletes, right? And shortly after 9-11 and 20 years of war, you know, there, there was obviously a, 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 a huge shift in that thinking. Um, so I, I think that, you know, combining the two is a logical step that is well, only going to make everybody better. Exactly. And, and Stu, a lot of what you're doing too, I mean, there's, you know, uh, we talked at length in our first conversations about how you're approaching it and how you're working with these athletes. Um, Cause I, you know, again, I, I think a lot of people who maybe thought they were on the athletic route or on the military route or whatever, it's, they're not so different. They're kind of the same in, in how they think about it and how they train uh, and how they kind of approach their journey. Um, again, we're, we're trying to, to make that process a little bit more simplified um, and a little bit more, I guess, uh, natural versus thinking it has to be one way or the other. Uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I love it. So, um, so with that, uh, what have you heard from Navy Recruiting Command with how everything looks on your site and, you know, GMTM? Is it, you, do you find it being helpful to the recruiters? Um, because, you know, the workouts that you have on there are not typical Navy fitness tests, but they are way cooler than the Navy fitness test. And you know, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, things are evolving into more of a tactical fitness test for all the branches of service. Uh, I was just wondering what, what, what was some of your feedback from the, from the Navy side? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're trying to do, again, we're primarily a sports platform, right? So I think early on, we're trying to mirror, you know, how sports organizations and how athletes use game time use our platform and sort of mirror that as much as possible to the military side of it. So, you know, we're sort of that, you know, quality over quantity type, right? That's why some of those workouts are maybe a little more challenging, right? We don't, you know, it's not, you know, of course anyone can participate, anyone can compete. And, and the way I always say it is if you don't want to do one of those workouts, but you're still interested in the Navy, or you don't have that, you can't build your profile and put your an about me video on it and, and, you know, reach out to these, these Navy recruiters that are on our platform, right? There's a million ways to get, to get involved versus just those workouts. But I think we started with those workouts uh, as a way to really look for some of the best of the best out there, right? Like we want to see some, 
some great, you know, potential athletes and prospects who are, who are driven to be in the Navy and be connected to them and kind of put their best foot forward. So, um, you know, again, we're, we're doing a, a lot of push with the future sailors that are out there with uh, athletes, uh, both, uh, you know, within the game time network and also uh, within the network of all of our, uh, our Navy uh, uh, servicemen and women. Um, and kind of just putting it out through even, you know, yourself, Stu, obviously have been a huge asset for us and, you know, uh, the, the tactical athlete world. Yeah. Uh, again, these are, these are maybe some athletes that uh, we think a huge part of it's just awareness, right? So how can we push our platform to, to generate awareness? Awareness leads to uh, participation and kind of that engagement and that engagement leads to opportunities. Well, I will tell you this, I had an interesting email uh, just the other week and someone was just asking, Hey, you know, I like to work out, I'm preparing for the military, you know, and I see these, you know, online calculators that are out there, you know, is, is there anywhere where I can totally. compete with those online calculators and see how other people are doing? And there's some websites that allow for, you know, stats to be generated. And it, and it just so happened that same week as I was introduced to the GMTM platform, and I was like, go check out GMT and see how you do all that. And, and, and he was an athlete too, still trying, you know, finishing out his last season. And I said, you do both, you know, go around, play That's around right. with all those. And it was a really fun answer. And my own research has led me to link GMTM two more times in other articles that I've written. And I'll send you those as well. Uh, but they're on military.com, which I think is perfect exposure for what you're going to do because the folks at military.com were like, Oh, I didn't know this existed. They, they, exactly. they had to do, they had to do research and make sure I was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're exactly right. And that's, you know, it's something where we're, again, we're, we're still early, even in the sports world. And now, you know, military, it's just, you know, putting, it's so funny when you, you see the light bulb click when things come into like the real world, so to speak. So when people and ask, like when real opportunities happen, when Riley Compton, uh, active duty Marine Corps officer submitted to the bobsled, did a great job and bobsled was able to discover her, engage with her and then really, you know, have her come out to a national trial and now she's part of the team. When that happens, it's just, it, it, it takes off like wildfire. Um, and so we are really excited to see, you know, maybe the, uh, you know, the gymnast, the gymnast or the water polo athlete um, that, you know, maybe is really interested in the Navy and they can build their profile and participate and they get connected with the Navy. And now they go on to, to do incredible things for our country. We're, we're really excited to see those come to life. We've started to um, kind of at the, the, the smaller stage and, and as we expand, which again, the goal here is to to expand, uh, you know, every single day uh, and grow every single day uh, to bring value to, to athletes and the organizations um, and then obviously the military organizations. So uh, anyway, I just say all that meaning ironic timing that you had that conversation because, um, again, we're, we're trying to build that awareness and kind of that growth. And once those things come to life and we start to see more and more, it just really catches like wildfire. And we're really excited for, for the next few weeks and months. Well, that's awesome. So where can athletes who are whether or not they're high school athletes want to go to college or college athletes that are thinking what's next where can they find out more information about game time so yeah and, and you you listed perfectly Stu. i mean everyone who might be listening or reading about this again this is as much as you know our work with the navy recruiting as much as it is team usa you know bobsled or rock climbing or you know, weightlifting as much as it is, you know, potentially going to Ohio Wesleyan University or Stanford University, as much as it is, you know, repping your brand at, you know, the Cleveland Browns, right? There's a million different opportunities on game time. And so, you know, I urge everyone out there to, to go and just build your profile, just like you would your LinkedIn, you know, own and build your game time profile, because it is going to be your best way to push that out and let all of these incredible organizations know who you are and what your story is and what you want to do um, first and foremost. So I, I, you know, again, there's, there's a lot of opportunities there and I would, I would urge everyone to, to first and foremost head there, check out the opportunities, check out the things to participate in and first and foremost, just build your profile. Uh, and that is at gmtm.com. So everyone, it's as simple as that gmtm.com and then follow us on, you know, Twitter, is kind of our primary, um, but Instagram as well. It's just at GMTM 
sports. So uh, very easy there. Nice. Nice. So thanks. Yeah. I'll, I'll put those links in the description of this uh, podcast as well. Uh, but uh, Connor, I really want to thank you for one, your time and your service, but also congrats on your transition into what you're doing now. It sounds like you found something you love to do. And when you do that, it's never a hard day's work. No, absolutely. So I, I can't thank you enough. I know this will be uh, definitely not our not our last conversation. We'll probably speak sooner than later, but I can't can't thank you enough for uh, the support since day one in, in this platform to to kind of discuss what we're doing in our story and look forward to you know six months a year from now, you know, kind of reevaluating and seeing seeing where we are then because I think it's gonna be really exciting. So absolutely. We're, yeah. We'll have you on on uh, you know, three hundred maybe. <laughs> there we go. See, see what's going on. So uh, th it. thanks for uh, joining us again. Everybody check out gmtm.com. And if you're looking for fitness training, specifically for a specific training program, stusmithfitness.com, check it out. Uh, you'll find some stuff there for you. So once again, Connor, thanks again. Yes, sir. Thanks, too.